Hi, this is 16.1. And what we want to deal with here is now Riemann sums when we're dealing in three dimensions. So what we're going to try to do is take the area of some sort of base, and we're going to go ahead and multiply it by some height. And then that will give us the volume for what we want. And so in your book, I highly recommend you check out the Fox example because that deals with the contour diagram. And so it tells you how to do the kind of the Riemann with that. So the idea behind the Riemann sum is kind of in pictures here. What we want to do is take some sort of base, and it might be rectangular, it might be other shapes, but then we want to grow the height out of it. Now the question is, is which height do you take? Well, in this interval, you might take what would be the lowest value for the height. So a contoured line would give you the lowest value. Also in that interval, it will give you the highest value. So you might choose the highest value for each one of these base pieces and then max it out to that point right there. And so it's all determined by which one you're going to take. Regardless, though, is that when you increase the intervals, just like we did in two dimensions, when we increase the number of uh, subintervals, <clears throat> we're going to end up with a better and better estimate. I think you would agree that this one is probably a lot closer in the actual volume than this one. And so if we use a lower point and an upper point in each one of these intervals, then we can kind of pinch in what is the actual volume that we are looking for. And so this is all based upon what we call double integrals or else iterated integrals. And we want to go ahead and um, get the philosophy behind them first in 16.1. 16.2 will do a lot more calculations with the actual integrals. Now the notation that we're going to use for this double integral is this right here. So we're going to have some region, and we're going to take the integral about some region of some function, and then my small little pieces is going to be the area. So this bottom piece here, right there, that's the area that I'm talking about, the small piece of area, and obviously it's going to get smaller and smaller if I increase my number of subintervals. So let's look at example number one. Let R be the rectangle that's closed on these uh, intervals, X is between 0 and 1, Y between 0 and 1, and use Riemann sums to make an upper and lower estimate of the volume of the region above R and under the graph Z is equal to E to the negative, and in quantity, X squared plus Y squared. So what we're approximating is this integral here. So to approximate this, what we need to do is find the area of each one of those little base pieces. So I still have my little picture over here, so I need to find the area of each one of those. And if you look, I can put a table of values out, and I am split this up into delta x and delta y, having uh, those pieces being 0.25. So then my area is going to be 0.25 times 0.25. So I'll write this more like this, is going to be delta x times my delta y. So those two pieces are going to be 0.25 times 0.25, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.0625. So now we want to get an estimate for each one of these little rectangles, the volume of those, as we go along. We do know that the base area is going to be this, and so then I just need to pick a height. So which height are you going to pick? Well, if I start here, my little subinterval, my first little rectangle, can be this base right here that is 0 to 0.25 on both the x and the y. Now, if you notice in that interval, I have a high value of 1, and then these two are lower values, they're the same on both sides, and then this one is the lowest value. So the question is, is which point do I pick? Well, if I want an upper estimate, a higher estimate, I want this point right here. Now notice that this function, or this, this figure, starts up here, and it's going to be decreasing in both the x and the y. And so whenever I take one little piece here, the upper left-hand corner is going to be a maximum, just because this is kind of decreasing in both areas. If I take another little square here, this little point here is going to be the minimum, which equates to this. 
So if I want an upper estimate, I'm going to be picking the upper left for each one of these rectangles, or um, cubes, I should say, or right rectangular prism is the pro appropriate term. If I want a lower estimate, I'm going to take the lower right one for all of these. So let's just do the upper estimate with all of these upper left values for each one of these bases that we do have. So one would be the very first one. My next rectangle is going to be, rectangular base is going to be this one here. What's your highest value? Well, it's this one here. Now, if you see the pattern that I do have, the next rectangle I'm going to do is the one below that. So I took the upper left-hand corner for each one of these, and I end up with, for the first row, these values, which just were all of these coming down here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I didn't include the last one because that's my yellow base, and I just used the upper left-hand corner, which is the point 5698. Now, continuing on, I'm going to skip over to this portion, upper left-hand corner, is going to be 0.9394, and I'm just going to continue on with that. So these are all the upper left-hand corners there. Then I'm going to go to the next one and the next one, and I'm not going to do this one because I don't have any upper left-hand corners when I am at 1. Now what am I going to do with all these values once I put them in? Well, I'm going to multiply them by 0.0625. I didn't write that right. So my estimate for the volume then becomes 0.68. Now remember that I did take the upper estimate for this, so we should now do the lower estimate. And we did say that the lower right-hand corner, so if I'm just looking at the very first one, this 0.882 is the one that I want. So I'm going to start here, go here, here, and here, and I'm going to finish all the way here. Yes? And so I'm going to try that again, write that out, and see what our estimate is for that. So if I did that same method with a lower bound estimate, I would get 0.44. What does that tell me about my integral here? I got two different estimates, one where I took the whole, all the highest points in the interval and one where I took all the lowest points. Well, it's going to tell me that the actual answer to this double integral is going to be somewhere in between that so I can lock it in. So that now tells me that I'm stuck in between these two different estimates. And that pinches in my definite integral. And so I have this 0.44, that is the one side, and then I'm going to have my 0.68 on the other side. And we lock it in. Now we did say, well, what happens if we make this more accurate? Well, here's the number of subdivisions, and this is an upper and lower bound estimate for each one of these situations. So when we did this estimate, we did a four by four, so we split it into four different parts. So one, two, three, four. Now they tell us that if we went ahead and did 18, 16, 32, 64, we're gonna get tighter and tighter together. So range is four, four to uh, six, eight, just with having doubling the intervals, subintervals that we do have, we're going to get a much more accurate answer. In fact, if we go out here to 64 by 64, we're going to be locking that in quite well, depending upon which error that we do want. So this is the same similar argument to what we did in uh, BC, but what we're doing really is we're going to take and do the area times some height. We need to choose this height. And it's either the upper bound in that interval or the lower bound in that interval. That's mainly what we're going to be working with right now. And obviously that will give us our volume. Okay, so that's what we're doing right now. A couple other items to note in this section is that if we do want to find just the area. So the interpretation of the double integral as area. Well, this area just means that I want the area of the region, which is the base. So if it has a height of 1... And I'm just going to take one times whatever that area base is, or all those different pieces of the area, like this, then I'm just going to get the area, I'm sorry, the volume of everything together, okay? So that just means that all those little cubes that we have just have a height of one. They're all going to be like this, height of one. 
and it's not necessarily cubes because the base could be anything, any kind of two-dimensional shape. The other thing to note is that average value is similar to what we did in the other one too. If we want to take volume, remember that this piece right here gives me the volume of this whole thing. So if I divide by the area of the base or the, or the bottom region, what's going to be left then is the average value of all those Fs that we do have. I could draw this in two dimensions pretty good, but I can't do it in this uh, situation very well. Sometimes you might see this too, as you might see the average value of F times, one, uh, times the area is equal to our double integral. Okay, so all I did was take this and put it over take this and put it over to the other side. All right, you might see each one of those, and so be ready for that and then be able to apply that. All right, that's all I have for 16.1. Riemann sums and calculations, you will have to do some contour diagram things as well. So if you need to jump into those uh, examples in the book, go ahead and do that. But really, you're just taking the highest value for an upper estimate within a region and then the lower value in that region for a lower bound estimate for our double integral volume. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day.